to welcomes in Max Boys country. Um, in fact, this year, my Rotary Club, Elthorne Hillingdon, has paired with Brim Mow Rotary to support a Rotary Scholar from Nepal who will be studying at Brunel University this autumn, which demonstrates the true spirit of Rotary. So thank you to um, past District Governor Peter Hamilton and to current DG Alison Sutherland for paving the way for this to happen. And of course, it will be my excuse to head to South Wales over the next 12 months. Um, cover this ground already. Um, thank you very much for the introductions, Chris. This is me. Um, yeah, I do pop up a bit too often, don't I? On Together Talks and with the magazine. Um, I put this slide in there not to impress, but just to merely explain my background. Uh, we understanding that it is a professional basis to what I do and that I'm not just an enthusiastic volunteer. So the plan is to chat for 35 minutes or so uh, before taking questions. And in true Baldrick fashion, there is a cunning plan. Um, while the title of the talk is about writing press releases, in isolation, that theme is meaningless unless I cover some other backgrounds which, uh, which will deliver some context. So these are some of the subjects I will be covering and not necessarily in that particular order. Um, so don't worry, um, I will try to keep the time uh, to take the questions at the end. So let me start by talking about the here and now. I don't need to tell you how COVID-19 has changed our lives in an unprecedented way, the biggest societal shift since the Second World War, but thank God for technology. Can you imagine how the world would have coped with lockdowns and restricted movement without technology? Rotary would have been in complete shutdown 20 years ago. The one thing the pandemic has done is to change business practices for the future, which we've seen with the growth of Rotary meetings online and great uh, district initiatives such as this. So those of you who were technophobes three months ago and now dab hands playing with your cosmic backgrounds on Zoom, and all of you know where the mute button is. These online forums are the perfect shop window to showcase the work of our amazing organization and to reach out to a new audience. But we must innovate. In the UK, three quarters of a million people have volunteered for the National Health Service during the pandemic, and hundreds of thousands more are involved in essential community projects supporting the isolated and the vulnerable. And I hope you agree, all of these are potential Rotarians. So is it now the perfect time to harness those volunteers into Rotary? And is it now the time when we need to think seriously about the messages we're delivering and how those messages reach potential Rotarians? Chris was kindly kind enough to mention the last issue of Rotary magazine, which I was particularly proud of because I thought this was a really good showcase of what is happening in Great Britain and Ireland. It shows Rotarians seeing them as individuals in their day-to-day -day jobs, serving on the front line. And also what this magazine has done, I hope, is to demonstrate the diversity and the demographic of Rotary across Great Britain and Ireland. Some would argue that that demographic's maybe not a true reflection of Rotary, whose average age is around 69. But if we are to sell Rotary, if we are to promote our organisation as being made up of leaders, go-getters, dynamic people of action, then what better platform can there be than this? This is telling Rotary's story. And I know this from, reflect, from what we've done by reflecting the stories I've received from clubs and districts. And only last week, I heard from my friend Maggie Hughes from the Cardiff Breakfast Club about the work of the Southern Wales clubs during the pandemic, where they're working with Inner Wheel to produce scrubs for frontline workers. And where in a separate uh, project, clubs have donated hundred pounds to fund intubation boxes for the Cardiff and Vale University Health Board, which has allowed staff to continue routine operations, which had to be stopped during the pandemic. These are great stories about Rotary as people of action and stories which deserve to be told to a wider community. So why have you invited me to speak to you this evening? Maybe Anton Deck cancelled at the last minute, but maybe the timing is pertinent because we are in the moment, we are in the moment of change, and we are in the moment of opportunity. Suddenly people are getting volunteering, and each and every one of these people, as I said earlier, are potential Rotarians. So now more than ever, it's vital we are standing from the rooftops to tell Rotary's story, 
and it's why your districts need to make sure that your public image is strong, focused and in touch with other aspects of, of your structure, such as membership. I spoke at the Rotary, Virtual, the Rotary International Virtual Convention three weeks ago and I said this, as Rotarians you can have the most creative membership ideas, the most imaginative fundraising initiatives and the most dynamic community projects, but if you're not telling that story properly, if your digital posts are filled with those mind-numbing rotary acronyms, if your messages are as about as engaging as a one-hour squeaky violin recital from your favorite niece, and if you're not reaching the right audience, then what you're doing has about as much value as a chocolate teapot. So this all comes back to telling Rotary's story because boy, do we have a story to tell. You know how people outside of Rotary perceive our organization in your communities. Most of those perceptions are wildly misplaced. So now is the time to change those misperceptions by being active in showcasing the valuable work which you are doing in your communities. This means adopting a proper, well thought out media strategy and remember what I said earlier about chocolate teapots. So I'd ask you this question. Does your club have a media strategy? I mean a proper, well thought out strategy which is shared by everyone in your club and not just stuck in someone's head. Do you have just one person in the club responsible for public image? Or does that task fall on several members' shoulders? If you do nothing else from this evening's webinar, have a discussion with your club the next time you, you dust off that public image plan. Look at the skills you've got in your club and think, how can we do this better? And if you don't have a plan, then get your skates on. So what I've put up here is a starter for you to think about when we, we talk about a media strategy. Each are very separate and distinct areas of focus. I've delivered quite a few public image presentations in recent months and by far the most common question I get is, how do we connect with those COVID volunteers who could be potential members? And my answer is this, start a dialogue now by telling your community that your club exists, what it's doing, what you're planning to do, and most importantly, why Rotary is relevant and matters. So these are the four key areas. When we talk about local professional media, we're talking about what would be in the old school, your local newspapers and websites, and more of that on the next slide. These have been the cornerstone of much Rotary publicity for many years and remain so. They now have printed publications and websites with a formidable reach, despite their declining circulations. We're also talking about local radio and even TV, but these can be a more difficult nut to crack, especially with the news in the last week of swinging cuts in the BBC with their local news coverage. But to succeed in business, I'm sure you'll agree, you've just got to make contacts and that applies with local media. If you've not done so already, get in touch with the news editor and have a conversation. Understand the demands of their business and what sort of content they're wanting. They're wanting. Do they want video, for example, for their website? Or do they have certain sections which they're looking for in their coverage, such as news, education, business, entertainment, environmental or community news? Could any of those sections fit your Rotary Club in terms of filling those pages? And what days of the week are those pages published? What are their deadlines? And more specifically, is there a particular reporter who is, who is associated with that section? It's all pretty basic stuff. Very typical business practice, so why not apply it with our Rotary lives? With community media, here I'm thinking of more localised media, often run by volunteers, but with still a very good reach. Take community radio stations, for example. In Swindon, there's Swindon 105.5 which has a good sized audience and they're crying out for news. You might even get a regular slot on there. I did see an advert a few weeks ago for them. Hospital radio is another focus. And what about those free community magazines which drop through the letterbox filled with trades adverts and some editorial? Why not target these two? And even think about paying an advert to promote on a Rotary Open Day or one of your events. Your Rotary Club website, 
Now, most clubs will have a webmaster, but how often is your website updated? With your homepage, is it easy for someone to find a contact and meeting details of your club? Is there a brief and neat description about your club and what it does? And if you're using the Rotary template, are your meetings up to date, even these Zoom meetings? Now, at my club, I produce a weekly newsletter using Microsoft Publisher. It's not particularly high end, but this publication is emailed every Wednesday to club members, to former members, and to friends of Rotary, and also businesses. And it's uploaded onto our website and also onto our Facebook page. A very easy way of disseminating information and putting up your weekly club diary. Social media. When it comes to social media, there is a veritable sweet shop of choices. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok. I've always believed in doing a few things well and a lot of things badly. So when it comes to Rotary, I would recommend that if you're a Rotary club with limited resources, just focus on Facebook. Why? Because the potential audience you're trying to reach will be the 40 plus age group and will be more inclined to use Facebook. Also, Facebook, sorry, although Facebook can be frustrating with its algorithms, which determines what people can see, it is easy to understand and with 2.6 billion people using Facebook each month, that is a pretty big audience. You can upload images and videos. There's no limit on word count. And even my, even my 80 year old mother and father use Facebook. And just one example, when you do return back to face-to-face -face meetings, why not, if you have a guest, take them to one side at the end, use your mobile phone to film a 90 second clip and then upload it to Facebook. It's easy. During the recent spate of President's handovers, I've seen some clubs streaming these events on, on Facebook Live. So as a, as a platform, Facebook, in my opinion, is the easiest to handle and broadly fits the widest demographic that we are aiming for in Rotary. And one final point about social media, there are plenty of community forums which you should be engaging with in Rotary. Public image is not the sole domain of a few in your club. It should be the responsibility of all, all Rotarians. And I'm very happy, either in questions or later on, to answer any questions. But in adopting a media strategy, it's important to take each of these five areas of focus and think, how can we use these platforms to promote Rotary? So in telling Rotary's story, it's important to remember who is your audience. Think about it now. With your messaging as a district and within your own clubs, who is your audience? Who are you trying to reach? And what messages are you trying to deliver? It's pretty diverse, isn't it? There are existing Rotarians, and we should never underestimate the value of membership retention when we go out to seek new members. But there are also external stakeholders to consider too. Your local community, Businesses, they're prime among those external stakeholders. Do you have a Friends of Rotary group, for example? So as a Rotary club, what are your strategic goals? Do you have a public image plan? That plan should be focused on regular engagement, tailoring a consistent message, which is relevant and grabs an audience. One size does not fit all. So the message you deliver to an internal Rotary audience must be differentiated for the messaging that you deliver to an external audience. It really is a digital sweet shop out there, but you are the gatekeepers of news. When I was a newspaper editor around the time of typewriters and fax machines, I was the gatekeeper of news. I controlled the news agenda. If you as a Rotary club, wanted publicity, you would turn to your local newspaper and get coverage. And frankly, if as an editor I didn't like you, I'd not publicise your news. I was never like that, of course, but the tide has now changed. With the media landscape changing and everything now digital, you hold the reins. You control the news agenda. With social media and your own website, you can develop your own following and set your own agenda. Now, I'm not suggesting you ignore traditional newspapers and websites. Far from it. In fact, 
there's greater opportunity now more than ever because the media industry is in turmoil. There have been thousands of job losses in recent years before COVID-19 and with the rise of digital media, the loss of advertising and falling circulations. Newsrooms are like the Marie Celeste, which has led to a phenomenon called user-generated content. When I was first an editor, user-generated content consisted of readers' letters or people sending in sports reports which were published. Nowadays, for mainstream news media, UGC consists of stories which are sent in with photos and videos. And the bottom line is this, if those stories are good enough, good enough quality, written with the proper structure, to the right word length and in the house style of the organisation, they will get automatically published. Yes, you need to do your research and you need to be able to produce quality content, but this is an open door for Rotary. Remember the phrase, user-generated content. By implementing a well thought out and carefully researched media strategy, you can reach out to parts of the community that you've never reached before. Sounds like a Heineken ad to me, but you know what I mean. Take hold of your media and work it well. So when we look at controllable media, first of all, we've got your website. Now, as I mentioned earlier, with your club website, if you haven't touched it for a while, then give it a good, good spring clean. It's a new rotary year, so refresh the content and the images. Make sure the content, contact details are all up to date, along with meeting information. Make the About Us section compelling. Don't overwrite and keep it to the point and come up with a plan to regularly maintain the site with at least one update a week. I know there's a lot of talk whether you should use the Rotary GBNI template hosted by Chris Sweeney or go on your own. I'm not going to go into that debate. It's a matter of personal choice and skill level. I use Chris Sweeney's website for my own club and there is a forum set up to assist webmasters to help you out there. For your social media, Again, this is a controllable, you can control the news agenda here. Again, this depends on your knowledge and your skill levels and your resources. There are clever apps out there such as TweetDeck and Hootsuite, which can help you to manage your social media. But I'm, I'm not gonna discuss that today. If you want to know more, I can recommend the, this Grantham Rotarian called Paul Wilson, who's produced an impressive library of videos which discuss um, social media strategies in a very clever fashion. You can find Paul on Facebook and also on YouTube, and these videos really are top draw. I was speaking to another Rotarian who is also excellent with social media called Sam Cross, who is with Saltram Rotary in Devon. She said to me, and this is good advice, that when you are dealing with social media, you have to be objective, so treat it like a dating website. That means, you want a good biography which draws your audience, not too long and waffly, but which tells them a little bit about you, but makes them want to know more. It needs to be confident and it shouldn't sound desperate. Sam said she was aware of a club where they were bombarding their audience with posts almost in a desperate manner. That turns people off. Think about your own habits. If you see regular posts, same old, same old, 10 times, a dozen times a day from someone. They need to be calmer and less aggressive. So they want to be, you want to be using your social media to promote club events and other events in the area. You should be looking at Rotary, Rotary social media, which is of interest and share that. If you look at, I have a Rotary editor page and I'm sharing posts from all over the UK, which I think will be of interest to the audience. So use your social media posts to signpost your website and create a link. For these next couple of slides, I wanted to take a case study to illustrate um, the use of some, uh, 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 to show how the social media has been used to promote an event. And I leave you this slide here, by the way, as some little, little reminders of things to remember on your um, media coverage. I will leave a copy of these slides for Mary afterwards for you to share if you wish. So this is the um, Billericay Soapbox Derby. It's a May Day event organised every year by Billericay Rotary. 
It didn't, of course, go ahead this year, but over the past four years, it's raised £125,000 for charities in East Anglia. The day-long event um, attracts 8,000 spectators and creates tremendous activity, tremendous publicity for the club through a number of media channels. And by the way, I'm conscious there that the flying rotary train has the wrong rotary branding, but you can't have everything in life. However, their media strategy got results. And last year, Billericu Rotary managed to get a piece in The Guardian, which is good going. And a couple of presenters from CBeebies got involved and a five minute broadcast was, was played on the BBC last year. We spoke earlier about user generated content and there's a strong element of it here for the local Essex media. Billericu Rotary managed to get a piece in their local paper, The Gazette, each week promoting the teams taking part. And it all helped as part of, of a strategically organized build-up, which began a good six months before the soapbox derby itself. And the newspapers love it. They've got 8,000 potential newspaper buyers. They've got 8,000 potential picture sales. they are bountiful advertising opportunities. And so it plays right into their hands. I think someone's got Pizza Hut ready to deliver by sounds of that phone. And there's, they also used external media really, really well here because they wanted to encourage teams to take part. So they used TV and radio. And they also use their, their social media sites to promote the brand. They use Facebook, they use Twitter, they use YouTube. And they also produced that made a, they also put together a video clip which had a compilation of, of the, the event itself. So it really promoted Rotary in a, really, in a very, good, very good light. And they even afterwards managed to help a distraught husband uh, find a wedding ring which he'd lost while attending the Soapbox Derby. So let's cut to the chase. 16 slides later, this is, we've come to the title of the presentation, which is about writing press releases. Well, in some ways, after I've introduced you to the concept of user-generated content, you could argue, what's the point of a press release when you can get the article published straight in the paper or on the website if you play your cards right? And that's a fair, it's a fair point. But in some ways, the press release you send to promote whatever you're doing in Rotary should be tailor-made for the organization you're sending it to. So don't just send out multiple copies. That is being uber lazy. Tailor your content according to the organization you're targeting. Look at their, their house style and ask yourself, what is the typical length of a story? And I would say you should never shoot for more than 450 words. That's a, about as much as most news organizations will take in word length. I have to say, I get to read quite a lot of illiterate rubbish from Rotarians, which is supposed to come from business professionals. Their text is littered with spelling mistakes, grammatical errors, and rambling sentence construction. Worse, it's filled with gratuitous backslapping and descriptions of the process and endless committees, which they leave the reader to wade through almost 2,000 words of pulsating tripe before getting to the heart of the story. It's like one of those Ronnie Corbett shaggy dog stories where you have to wait for the punchline at the end. Here, if you're writing for the media, you've got to make sure you get the hub of the story, the nub of the story in the first 100 words. If you haven't grabbed the reader with a basic outline of your story, you've lost them. So a quick trick here is imagine you're telling a friend a story in summary and you had to do it in 30 seconds. What would you tell them? Copy that with your writing, summarize the story in those first 100 words, and then add more detail. It's always good to include quotes. What quotes do is they validate a story. They give it another voice. It also gives people who read the story and want to get in, in touch with your Rotary Club a point of contact. Quotes should be comment, feelings, reaction and emotion, not facts. Don't worry about writing a headline. You, you can stop trying to mimic the sun. It won't be used because news organisations will run a headline which carries something which is called search engine optimization. So the, the, the story can be found on a website. For now, a simple strap line will do. And at the end, I always think this is a nice touch, add some editor's notes. So, and 
you can have this as a sort of template. Quite simply, this is a brief outline of your Rotary Club, what it is, what causes it supports, as well as some details about the club. And also you can include some contact details for the news organisation to get in touch with you. And the final thing on, on key area here is group images are absolutely crucial. Most news organisations struggle because they have laid off photographers. So they rely on readers' images. So if you can send three or four, no more, good quality images as separate attachments and save as JPEGs, that would work. Again, I sometimes get clubs sending me a press release of 2,000 words plus a, a gallery of 30 images to wade through. I haven't got time. So the same with the media. They can bin it easy. Make it easy for them. If anyone's getting technical here, then we're talking about 300 DPI. That's the pixel dots per inch. So a few more tips to help you with your press release writing style and we should be on to questions. By house style, I mean read the newspaper websites. Understand how they write dates and names, for example. Try to copy their style so your piece is a neater fit. They don't need to change it too much. This is not to meant this, this next point is not meant to be prescriptive writing by numbers, but this is how I teach journalists to write. I teach journalists to keep their sentences tight. Not too tight, but don't ramble. If you read your sentence back and you go into an asthmatic fit, then it's too long. This flows on from my previous point. If you read back your previous story and do proofread, you will spot mistakes and you will notice word repetition. And you will also recognize how easy a read your piece is. But if you read your piece back and it flows like trains along a, run, along a train track, then it's a good read. Remember those first 100 words. Remember the elevator pitch. Describe the story to a friend in 30 seconds and then go on and give some more detail. This is simply about being professional. You wouldn't be lax in your business, so why be wayward with your spelling and grammar here? If in doubt, check and get a dictionary. Yep. Rot Rotarians love their acronyms as if they're James Bond or some part of a secret service. Acronyms are a bigger turnoff than peanut butter and jam sandwiches. They alienate your audience when you're meant to be communicating effectively. So don't use them only if you have spelled them out first. I just wanted to quickly show you here, and again, I'll leave this slide with Mary. This is an example of, of I think, of a, a decent press release, which was sent to me by, as you can see there, Darlington Rotary. You can see actually that the writer here has summed up the story in the first four paragraphs, first five maybe. But that really sums it up quite neatly. Quotes in there, nice quotes there. And a page at the bottom with a, a link to their where to donate to. And also that's their editor's notes. So they put some picture captions in there to accompany the pictures. Where to find further information. And a short bit about um, Rotary and where to contact them. That to me, is a nice template. These are the pictures. They're not, they're not great pictures, but they do the job. You might argue, well, where's rotary in it? Yeah, you could argue perhaps there should be people wearing rotary shirts, but actually, as long as you've got rotary in there and the pictures are gonna be published, it does the job. I'm aware I've covered a lot of ground. And there are other areas which I'd love to explore, like how to get the right images, to talk about copyright and to talk about branding. But these are, are for another time. I've often felt 
that in Rotary, public image is the poor cousin, often ignored and left in the corner. But I hope you can see from my words this evening that now is the time to think differently, to think strategically, and to tell a Rotary story loud and proud. Thank you, or Dio. Thank you, Dave. I'm going to handle the questions for you. And while you're thinking of those questions, folks, as I said, remember to use the hand, click on participants, go to your name, click on the right and raise your hand. And then I'll ask you questions. But while we're waiting for that day, we, we prepared a little something earlier. So William of Bridge End wants to know, how many times in the last year has there been articles on Rotary in the open press? Oh, crikey. Um, William, a good question to ask um, in the open press. I, I mean, how would you define the open press? Would you say about local media or national media? Um, so, national. you know, for, sorry. National. Yeah, national. Um, not often. Um, we, we, had, um, we had stuff in there around the State of the Nation report, which was written, which was done around March time around volunteering. And it's, it is hard to, it's hard to get through there. And I think we need, we need to, to do more. But then I would also argue, actually, while national advertising, sorry, national um, newspapers is great, and it's, yeah, aren't we there for Rotary? Is that going to, is that a, a stronger um, and a, a taller saying, right, we should be in the South Wales Echo and the Swindon Advertiser regularly? And to me, you know, if I was to trade off the two, I would say, say that in a sense, I, that's, that would be my focus. That's where I'd be pushing for. Thank you. Now, Richard Lee Sapershaw says, copyright issues, you alluded to them. Can he outline you, outline the rules relating to use of photographs, images, etc.? We know we have to be careful when using other people's work, but are there alternative sources for images that we can use in addition to our own? Okay, um, if you want more advice on this, I'll give it to you, but here's the, the 60 second run through. The 1988 Copyright and Designs and Patents Act says that you cannot publish anything which you do not own. So you cannot publish any picture, any words, any recordings which you do not own yourself. So you need to get permission from, from the original source. If you have a picture and you are unsure of its, of its source, then find it. And if you're not sure, don't use it. Rotary has just had to pay 5,000 euros because of a copyright breach, a stupid copyright, copyright breach, because there are bots out there which will go and detect the, the pictures on your web pages which haven't been used. There are a number of places where you can find free um, images. For example, on Google alone, if you go for an advanced search and you look for copyright free images, you can go on to those. There are also a number of, um, I think Splash is, is one. There are, if you, if you look up that, that's a, a, a free image place to find images for. Um, but above and, you know, this is really key. Do not use anything that you do not own. Seek permission. And if you get permission, give them a credit. And yeah, someone's put on Shutterstock there. And, uh, but Shutterstock requires a license. Pexels, again, is a good one. Um, so yeah, look around. If you've got any doubts about copyright, please come and ask me. I'm more than happy to take you through on that. David Jayquay of Barry, would you unmute and ask your question, please? Hi, Alison. Thanks for that. Uh, it's an observation, not, not a, actually a question. And it's driven by the very last slide of the presentation and the quote from Paul Harris. Uh, I'm assuming everybody read the quote especially the final bit that Rotary would need to rewrite its history and keep rewriting. When he considered that that quote was made at the very origins of Rotary, and yet for the past 30 years that I can recall, we have fought a losing battle against those that would fight against change and evolution. And yet the, the concept of change and evolution is obviously right at the very core of Rotary to start with. Ergo, our problems are a lot bigger than we thought. David, all I'd say to you is that we, we, stand, we stand right now on the threshold of the biggest change ever. And mm. it, it's, it's up to clubs um, and members to adapt to that change. We, we have to adapt. There are some clubs 
which haven't met since March. And sadly, they will decline. But we have great opportunities here. And Paul Harris was perceptive back in 1905. Mm. And we have to take on those, we have to take on those, um, on, on those, those words of over a decade, of over, over a century ago. The fact of the matter is, reading that, that phrase, for a lot of Rotarians, sadly, and we need to be blunt here, for the last four decades at least, a lot of Rotarians in their Rotarian life have been lead, living a lie. Mm. Mm. Thank you. I, I would also add that it's a bit challenging at this time, Dave, that statement, when we have folk that want history rewritten and statues torn down. So um, I would like to examine and contextualise it and not leave it as a standalone. Yeah, I mean, what I would say to you is there are some people who, who don't like bling. They don't like some of the, the traditions in Rotary. And I actually do like some of them because actually that's what Rotary stands for. So it has to be a mix. But we also, you know, I, I accept what David has, has to say um, about, you know, moving forward. And if we are to attract future Rotarians, we have to, we have to create a climate and environment in which they're going to feel comfortable in. So there has to be an accommodation along the way. Thank you. Well, we have another um, question from Richard Lees. He's got loads for you, for sure. He says, use of Rotary themes. What are the rules for using the Rotary theme, Rotary Opens Opportunities? Are we restricted to use a theme within Rotary documentation only? Or can we use a theme in media articles to promote our support for the community? What do they tell you in San Diego, Alison? <laughs> oh, come on, and you're in the hot seat, not me. I did, go San Diego. I, did a, I, did, I did go to San Diego. I'm not a district governor. But what <laughs> Alison would have been told in San Diego when she was there, went there earlier this year pre-lockdown is the fact that the, um, the theme is for internal use only. Now, one could argue that's a hell of a lot of money we waste each year on a theme. But it really, it is a theme solely for Rotarians. So um, Rotary Connects the World, Opens Opportunity, etc., etc., is for our own theme, which Holger will use there. For external, it's not meant to go there. I mean, there's nothing to stop you using it, but actually, um, the, the, the focus really is it's a, it's a historical anachronism. I personally don't think it's the right one, but we should just have one, you know, one theme and, and go with it. So yeah, it's um, the internal theme is for internal use only. And I'm sure what you're saying that, Dave, you'd like to emphasise as well the, um, the need to be diligent around branding and the use of Rotary and what it's attached to, permissions, etc. Exactly, and it's nice to see, Alison, you've got a very nice screen behind you, which is branded correctly, well done. Um, the, the Rotary brand has been around since 2000. Track, and by the way, someone said they thought Billericay was invented like Barry Island. Billericay does exist. Um, strange town, but it's, uh, I used to work there, but it's, uh, it, it does exist. So yeah, branding is, is really important. And you might say, well, yeah, but it doesn't matter, does it? Well, imagine within your own company, if they change the brand and you decided to set, start your own maverick campaign. Imagine if you were working for McDonald's, you went for the old brand or, or for Apple, you'd be kicked out. So there has to be consistency of brand. And so it's really important that when we do um, branding, and to be fair, when I see certainly Southern Wales in the 11, 1100 and seeing the, the, the material you put out there, it is well branded. And, and Mary Adams, especially with the work you do with the, the branding and, and stuff like that is, is fantastic. And um, yeah, you, you are the brand kings and queens. Oh gosh, that's a bit of a responsibility. Come on. Hey, the next question is in line with the pictures, really. Music within videos. Can we use background music in our videos without incurring performing rights costs? No. You can, you, there, there, is, there is, again, there's music available, which you can use, but you just can't take um, music off a, off a website and, and run it in the background. Um, I've, got, um, I've got an autistic son and um, he started, uh, you might think, where's this going? Well, I took a video of him um, getting really um, emotional to Bohemian Rhapsody 
and put the video on Facebook and Facebook took it down because I had con I had contravened the, um, uh, the, the, the copyright. So with Together Talks, um, if you if you have a look at Together Talks, the music we've taken is 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 is, is share is free share um, music which we which we use, and all the images again are free share images. And if you look at if you look at the credits, they've all got credits underneath um, to say where they've come from. So, like I suggested earlier with with pho with uh, photos, um, with music, you need to source it from reputable um, free shareware um, apps. And is it true that the older it is, the less likelihood it is that you're paying for it? So if you go back years, that the copyright, copyright etc. Yeah, expired. copyright copyright lasts 70 years, which is about as old as Cliff Richard, but it is 70 years. <laughs> um, it, it is about 70 years it goes back to. But even then, the the estate is still alive, by the way, is, is Sir Cliff, uh, but the estate still has has some ownership there. So I wouldn't I wouldn't try and go there. Um, and also, would you really use Cliff Richard as a background theme? I would try and find something free and, and which is more in keeping with what you're trying to present. I was thinking of classical, dear. Anyway, the last question for you is, uh, again, it's images. So um, it's a question and you're giving lots of information. Images of people used in videos and photographs. What are our responsibilities when taking shots of crowds, say at a local fete or festival, can we use the images that include people's faces without having to ask permission, etc.? And I'm not referring here to adults and not to children, but general pictures. Yeah. So this is not actually about copyright. This is about privacy. And the privacy laws in this country are such that you can take pictures of people um, in a situation, uh, of, you know, in, in a crowd. It's, it's what's known as informed consent, which allows you to do that now. From an ethical standpoint, if you're with a small group of people and you're going to take an image, then you'd, you'd ask permission. With children especially, I know this question wasn't focused towards children, yes you would ask. You don't need, you don't need a written um, uh, disclaimer, but because of this informed consent, you can take pictures um, of, of anyone. Um, but I would explain to them you're doing the picture, what it's for, and so that there's no there's no surprises, but you can't be sued. You won't be breaking any laws. Thank you. Um, I also note that we often with children a reason for no pictures, other than all the obvious, is that some children have been removed from their homes and they're secreted somewhere else. So it's for they can, so they can't be tracked down Absolutely. by parents yeah. who are deemed to be unfit. Oh. David, you are going to have the last question, David Jakeway, and then we will hand over to Rory. Hi, uh, just a response to the last query, we photographs, uh, informed consent, photographs of groups at all. Very true what Dave says, but herein lies the cat. You have to consider also the environment and the location of where you're taking the photograph, because the landowners or the property owners may have some sort of, um, uh, what's the word? injunction in place or might have some sort of bar on photographs of the public being taken. The uh, reason I say this is uh, I work for Network Rail as, as most of you know and um, generally we get now and again the steam charter trains come along like the, the Orient Express at all and normally that attracts a big crowd of people and people are taking photographs. Five years ago we had to start enforcing no photographs being taken of the trains where members of the public who turned up were concerned, purely on our land. The law, the law, the, the rules for the property itself were no photographs of the public to be taken. So yes, there is in uh, implied consent, but you also have to bear in mind the land you're on when you're taking the photograph. They may actually have regulations in place which bar you doing it. Thank you. So, David, do you need a last word or may I hand over to Rory for the photo of thanks? Go for the vote of thanks. <laughs> All right, Rory, it's over to you. OK, thank you, Alison. Um, I'm not sure if it's the first, but three districts have come together tonight in a collaborative way. Isn't it great that we can emerge from our historical silos of clubs and districts and work collaboratively on this type of initiative. So we go forward as one rotary. 
This is really important as we seek to grow Rotary in the coming year. Dave, you know, when somebody starts their presentation with reference to Baldrick, that you're in for an entertaining session with a serious underlying message. And Dave didn't d disappoint. Just as Blackadder and Baldrick exist in many incarnations through the ages, so has Rotary. We are entering a new era of opportunity for Rotary, and Dave told us to include quotes. So in the words of Blackadder, he has given us the basis of a plan so cunning you could put a tail on it and call it a weasel. So thank you very much, Dave. Dave mentioned content and hopefully RIBI is going to help us with some catchy flyers rather than each club having to compose their own. I've already seen a couple from our district um, and they're very, very good. But I think, wouldn't it be great to have one unified message in terms of a flyer that we could send out to these volunteer groups? I raised it recently with Amanda um, at Governing Council, and I hope we can come and produce something um, for all clubs to be able to use. So lastly, Dave, well, thank you very much, but I'd like also to thank the tech guys tonight, Stuart Ross and Ian Hughes, also Mary Adams, our public image guru. Thanks also to my fellow DGs, Chris and Alison, and I look forward to more collaborations in the future. So everyone, keep safe and a very good evening to you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very enjoyable. Thank you. Good. Mary would like the steam to stay on the line, please. And everyone else, we bid you bye-bye. Dave, bye. would you like to stay on as well? Which Dave are you talking to? Dave King. Ah, uh, why don't? <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Jake Way. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thanks very much. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. 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 Alan and, and Kate, do you just leave?